you'll hear the music of old time fiddles. The singing, dancing, and fun of America's greatest tradition in entertainment. The Grand Ole Opry, live just as it happens. One full hour of country music and comedy sent your way by Purina, the greatest name in livestock and poultry feeding. The checkerboard. The checkerboard. Look for the store with the checkerboard. For all the birds and stock you feed. Purina chows are what you need. The checkerboard. The checkerboard. The Hello, folks. This is your checkerboard man, Eddie Hill, speaking for your hometown Purina dealer and saying welcome to the Grand Ole Opry. I mean, the Ryman Auditorium is busting at the seams with all your favorite Grand Ole Opry stars. And the checkerboard welcome man is out for a big parcel of fine guest stars. I've got some friends of my own, too. The two little pigs I borrowed last month, and I'll be back a little later with them. It all happens right now, because right now we're saying... Here's Carl Smith and Purina's Grand Ole Opry! You are the one in my heart and my darling, my life's greatest thrill. Oh, you are the one in my heart, and I know that I love you, and I always will. We pay for the future with tears from the past. Welcome to our grand old Opry. I mean, we got checkerboard doing this tonight. We've got Buddy Epson all the way from California visiting with us. We've got two of the cutest little kids that are a sensation of country music right now, the Collins kids. And we got the Briar Hoppers who come all the way from up in Indiana to be with us tonight. And there's a lot of work going on around the barn. Say, you fellas, how about letting up and just taking a little preaver, huh? Right, yeah. Well, it's the Jordan Air. <laughs> I want to dig a little deeper in his love, dig a little deeper in his love. I want to dig a little deeper in the storehouse of his love, of his love. Well, I want to dig a little deeper in his well. I want to dig a little deeper in his love. I want to dig a little deeper in the storehouse.
fine, Charlie. Real well, good. Thank you, Carl. Say, would you mind giving us a hand here with this hay? Oh, no, give it a bite. I ain't done this in years. I like it. Can I put some of it on the stall? I think that'd be a good idea. All right, let me get some of this stuff over in here. <laughs> what did I do? What did you do? You can quit blowing that black Well, if it ain't Jim Clark. <laughs> The snob head of... Well, bless his heart. It's Carl, that's who it is. Hello, Carl. Hello, Jim. How you doing, old buddy? We that gone good. Oh, not head. Oh, friend. <laughs> hey, what you do with that banana you had in here a minute ago? I, I didn't have no banana I, in my ear. I seen you with the banana in your ear. You did. I ain't had no banana. You did, too. He had a banana in his ear. I never he done was, it. You did done it. He walked in over there, and he had this banana sticking out the side of his ear. And I walked up to him, and I said, Carl, oh, buddy, you, you got a banana in your ear. He said, huh? I said, you got a banana in your ear. He said, what'd you say? I said, you got a banana in your ear. He said, I can't hear you, honey. I got a banana in my ear. <laughs> Why don't you just sing us a song? <laughs> Get out there, you little squealer. Boy, are you. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. Say, Eddie, is that my pigs? Boys, they sure are. Yeah. Would you like to know how much they grow in just 28 days on Purina Pig Startina? Yeah. Yeah, All Eddie. right. Rodney, we weighed your little pork in at 45 pounds. And remember, only 28 days ago, weighed 18 pounds. That's right. That means it's gained 27 pounds. Hey, that's good. And Jody. Yeah. Yours weighed only 18 pounds 28 days ago. Today, he weighed in at 46 pounds, which means he has gained 28 pounds. 28 pounds? 28 pounds. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Roderick, I told you mine had let you Well, he just, just, just eat more, that's <laughs> all. <more. laughs> There's not enough difference to argue about. Now, let's go back here and check the records again, shall we? Uh, yeah. All right, let's walk back here now. Uh, Jody, yeah. yours gained 28 pounds, yeah. and Rod's gained 27 pounds. Yeah. But look, the total pounds gained was 55 pounds for both pigs. Yeah, yeah. Now, the total pig Startina eaten was 99 pounds. 99 pounds. But the feed cost per pound of gain was only 9.4 cents. How about that? You know something, Eddie? By that, that's what I call low-cost feeding. It Eddie. is for a fact. Low-cost feeding. Yes. Hey, Jody. Jody, what are you doing? What are you looking at? I'm just looking to see if them our pigs don't split their hides anywhere around. Oh. <laughs> no, fellas, they're not split, but they're sure tight. And, folks, this is sure the time to keep hurrying your pigs to market. Because hog prices have sure moved up and promised to be even better in the weeks ahead. 
Purina dealers all over the country are proving with pigs borrowed from their customers, your neighbors, that there's nothing like Purina hog chows for fast, low-cost gains. Drop in at your hometown Purina dealer store, the store with the checkerboard sign right away, and see for yourself how Purina can help you make money with hogs this year. Kind of interesting, wasn't it, Carl? Well, that's something. You know, June? Yeah, we got pigs here. We're in Haddon. And I guess you folks think maybe because we got pigs on these show and everything that we just old country hicks and we ain't never been nowhere. But we have, really. We just got back from Europe. I was over there this last week and we hey. had the... We had the hey, buddy, buddy. We gouging me. Hey, huh? gouging you. What do you mean we've been hey. over to Europe? We just got back, ladies We ain't been to... We you're, ain't... You're gouging me again. I slept the floor out We here. ain't been to Europe. We just got back. We, we over... ain't. You was the one said we went not head. I didn't say no such a thing. You did, Donnie, I too. did not. He did, too. He said, see, we went to New York last week. Yeah. And we was going to go out on this here boat for a little yeah. trip, but we ended up and we went all the way to Europe. Oh, we, we did. didn't. We just went out there and rode around a while and come back. We didn't go you nowhere. You said, I looked all over that boat for him, all over the place. We was way out there and he couldn't see land at all. We was just a sloshing and a going all over the place. And I couldn't find the car, and I finally did find him. I went way up there on the top deck of that boat, and I found him up there leaning out over that rail, hollering, Europe! Europe! <laughs> Let's get out of the way and make room for Eskimo News Briar Hoppers, dancing in all the way from Indiana. the folks to meet these kids here. They come all the way from California to be with us, and you're going to enjoy the Collins kids. Let's go. <laughs> Let little character get his guitar there. We're glad to have you all on their grand old lot with us, Laurie. And Larry, and I know that everybody's going to enjoy you got a song for him, ain't you? Huh? I sure have. You have him? Are you ready to play it? Ready. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm 
You take your guitars off and just make, let me help you, Lori. We'll lay them over here. Set that one there, Larry. Okay. I just want you all to make yourself at home and anything you want, you ask for it. You ain't gonna get it for that sport anyway, huh? Carl, put that down there. Oh, you mean that pretty girl? That's Miss Jean Shepherd. <laughs> here I want you to meet. This is Lori and Larry Collins. Hi, Collins Hi, Fine, thank you. No, no, you're, you're right. Now, what was that all about, Tom? Well, he said you didn't look like you'd been on the Grand Ole Opry for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, kids, we got somebody over here that I know you're going to enjoy because they play the type of music that we call the spirit of the Grand Ole Opry. Let's go over here and meet Lester Platt and Earl Scruggs, okay? Thank you. 
you like that? Sure was, Carl. Good. Oh, you beat anything I ever saw. I don't know where she's at. June was around here somewhere a while ago. Oh, over there she is. She's over there with Furlan Husky. If I had Latin's lamp, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd just rub and wish and then I'd be right there with you. If I owned a magic rug, there's just one place I'd fly. To your front door, that's where I'd soar. We'd let the world go by. Aladdin was a lad who had a lamp so dear. He just rubbed his lamp, then his servant would appear. He owned a magic carpet that would fly him through the sky. Oh, to be Aladdin, oh, I wish that lad was I. If I had Aladdin's lamp, these things would surely be. I'd just rub and wish and then I'd bring you here with me. If I found a magic rub to fly us through the air, we'd just love and kiss and hug, we wouldn't have a care. start dreaming of long green stuff this time of year it's grass they have in mind not folded money but they go together if you handle cows on pasture right here's cliff purdue dairy herdsman at purina's research farm to tell us why we're always happy to see cows pour out milk after they go on new spring pasture but cows need more than grass alone if you expect them to stay in high production very long let me show you what I mean. Two matched groups of cows were turned out on pasture in April. One group got pasture only, while the other group continued to receive a regular Purina milking ration. Then in October, we put the grass only group back on regular milking rations and fed both groups the same on through the fall and winter. But those grass only cows never did catch up. At the end of 10 months, the Purina fed group was ahead by 1,750 pounds per cow. That's over 20 cans more milk per cow. That extra milk more than paid the Purina, those cows received on pasture, and we got most of the milk in the fall when prices were highest. Now, the cows that got grass alone went into the barn in a rundown condition. They used most of their feed after October to rebuild their bodies. The cows that got Purina all summer went into the barn in the fall in fine shape, like this one. And they used their fall feed to make milk. Thanks, Cliff. That is a real money-making story, isn't it? 20 cans more milk per cow during fall and winter by feeding cows on pasture. You can do it, too. 
Just ask your Purina dealer for bulky less. A great big bulky bag of low-cost milk-making chow. See what I mean there, Fur? Yeah, I understand, man. See I couldn't that? get it straight. Hey, uh, hey June, Furley, have y'all seen Buddy anywhere? Ain't he been here yet? No. No, I ain't Buddy ever been here yet. I heard y'all calling his I name. I thought he was here. Hey, oh, I see a couple of characters over here. I don't know where he's at. Maybe they know. Cousin Minnie Pearl and Rod Brashfield. <laughs> looking for him, buddy. Now, 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 Rodney, you know we're always pleasant to our visitors. What do you mean? You got up your sleeve, Rod. Oh, well, I don't know. Pardon, he's jealous. Oh, oh, I ain't done it, Minnie. I ain't done it. I just want to show up some of them my Hollywood fellas. Oh, Rodney. You seen this here Buddy Epson in them pictures, ain't you? Yeah, I've seen him. He's a good actor. You seen him in these here David Crockett pictures lately? Buddy, he was David Crockett's right hand. Yeah, yeah. He, You know he sings? Sings good. Yeah, and do you know he dances? Oh, he can really dance, Rod. Well, Carl, I can do all them things. Oh, oh Rodley. I can too, Minnie, oh. and I just, I'm just going to show some of them up tonight. Oh, well, i tell you one thing, buddy. You'd better be doing it pretty quick, because here he comes. Yeah. He's our special guest all the way from California, Star of Streets and Radio and Stream, Buddy Jim. We're glad to have you on the Grand Ole Opera. Thank you, Carl. And I'll bet you, I'll bet you that's Minnie Pearl. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. You know, Minnie, when I left Hollywood, all my friends said to me, when you get down there to the Grand Ole Opera, if you want to date with a real pretty girl, you ask Minnie Pearl. Oh, really? Yeah, because she knows all the pretty girls down there. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. So let's get going. Let me hear those phone numbers. See there, what did I tell you? Maybe you were right, uh, Rodley. I'm right. Mr. Edson, meet Mr. Rodley Bradfield. Oh, howdy. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edson, you dance, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, I do, Minnie. I dance. Well, it may not, you may not know it, but among my other talents, I also do a little turk sticking myself. Yeah. As well as my friend, Mr. Rod Bradfield. Boy, I'm going to show that guy up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to show him up tonight. <laughs> now, look, you two characters are not going to try to show Buddy how to dance. Wait. Well, precisely. Oh, now, wait a oh, minute. Carl, you know, confidentially, I could use a couple of lessons. Well, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna make him look just plumb sick. Just plumb sick. <laughs> Duplicate this if you dare. Tell it, Minnie. Hot dog! Pretty good, Minnie. I don't know whether I can follow that. And uh, then uh, my friend, Mr. Roger Brassfield, he'll, he'll overwhelm you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I, do what, Minnie? Roger. <laughs> Well, you know, like, I'm overwhelmed, he's overcome. I'm over here. Oh, right. <laughs> overwhelmed means do it better than him. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Now's my chain. Yes. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Epson, watch this. It's a dog on his dancing I ever did see. Thank well, you. Well, like you. What about you now, buddy? Well, gee, I don't know He's if I can follow that. Good. He won't do it. I don't know if I can follow it, but I'll try. All right. <laughs>
she's in this business. <laughs> that gives me an idea, Minnie. I'm going to write us a play. Oh, Rod. Yeah, we've got Mr. Epson here. Let's get him to act some first. Oh, now, Rod, don't tell me you're going to write a play tonight. Yeah, Carl, I oh, can do it. Oh, you can't write no play Yeah, tonight. I can do it, Carl. I, I'm getting the message through now. Ooh. Help. Got it. I'll tell you what, Buddy Epson will be George, like he was in them Disneyland pictures. Yeah. And many of you will be the girl. Good. And I will be Davy Kuka. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll go out and write the play, you go out and round up some Indians. I'll round up. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Madam. Rodney, I don't know no Indians real well. No? I had, I knew one Indian one time. Yeah? He was so nice. Come but on. he had the funniest habit. He kept going around building a fire in his toupee. <laughs> Toupee? Yes. Oh, no, no, Minnie. You don't mean toupee. You mean TP, see? A toupee is a wig. Well, that's why I was building a fire in it. He wanted to keep his wig warm. <laughs> Go find the Indians. I'll be back in about three minutes. Buddy, don't pay too much attention to them characters. They get kind of wild sometimes. Oh, they're wonderful. You know, Carl, after hearing about the Grand Ole Opry for so many years, you have no idea how excited I am to be down here. Oh, well, we're glad to have you, buddy. Well, I hear this is the home of the guitar. We have got guitars of all kinds and pickers to match it. You ain't never seen the assortment we've got. In fact, there's one back here now. It's one of the best that I'd like for you to meet. Come over here and I'd like for you to meet Chet Hatchett. Hello, buddy. Hey, nice to see you. Hey, I saw this fella. You were out in the California on that uh, Tennessee Ernie show. That's right. Well, now, can I make a request? Fire away, boy. How about you playing that tune you played that day from your new RCA Victor record? Uh, poor People of Paris. The Poor People of Paris. That's it. thing, but first, if my old pal, Fess Parker, is watching, forgive me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you're George, and Minnie is my girl, and she's been captured by the Okie Pinoke Pokey Indians. Okie dokie? Okie Pinoke. Okay. Now, all me and you do, I'm Davy 
truck will cook up and you, uh, Georgia, we'll go find Minnie. Huh? What do we do? Now, all we need is, uh, we've got everything. We need some music. Some stalking music. Stalking music. Marvin, have you got that installed? <laughs> Let's go, boy. Hey, George. George, I think there's something behind me beside you. Yeah, there is, Davy. What is it, George? It's a boy. How big a boy? Well, it's your boy. Oh, stay with me, boy. Come on, George. Wait a minute, George. It's awful quiet, George. George? Hey, George. George! Oh, well, there you are, George. I don't know, but I believe I smell an okie finoki pokey Indian. Well, you got two more smells coming, Davy, because there's three of them. Well, don't worry about it, George. Help! Hey, George! George! Is it George? Hey, Davey, take it easy. Is it George? Don't show no fear, Davy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, don't. don't... Mean looking Indian. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. <coughs> I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. I'll... Uh, hey, boy. I want to know where my gal Minnie is. Her name's Minnie, my girl I'm looking for. I know you got a head somewhere. Her name's Minnie. In your language, she might be known as Minnie Ha Ha. <laughs> no, not he he. Ha Ha. Minnie Ha Ha. Ha. Hey, Kalaja. Have you seen my gal Minnie? My girlfriend Minnie, I know you got her somewhere. I want to find her. Where can I find her? Oh. That's what I want to know. How? <laughs> I'm going to find my friend Minnie, my girlfriend. Minnie. Uh, hey, you. I know you're in and you've got Minnie Pearl tied up to a tree or something around here. I want to find her, my girlfriend, Minnie Pearl. She's about so high and about so wide. She's got a face. Well, she's got a face. <laughs> Have you seen her? Uh, yeah, that's her. <laughs> Where's she at? Heat big woman up Heat big canyon. In Heap Big Camp. Well, Heap Big Flitter, we just come from there. <laughs> well, George, we've got the backtrack. We got the backtrack. <laughs> well, how in the cat hard did y'all get here so fast? We take them shortcut. Take them shortcut. Strawberry shortcut. Strawberry shortcut. <laughs> Hold that gun, George. Never mind your shortcut, uh, never... Hi, George! There's Minnie Todd burning at the stake. Ask her what's cooking. Hey, Minnie, what's cooking? Me! It's hot tonight, buddy! Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, gal. Fear not. I'll save you. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? I'll whack you down, gal. Stand back, shortcut. Now, come on down, Minnie. My hero! My hero. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, shortcut. Well, be careful, Davey. He's an awful mean-looking Indian. I know it. I know it. Let me put up my boy, and I'll... I'll I don't know what I'll do. I'll, I've been sick. I'll grin him down. Uh, I'll grin him down. I'm quite a grinner, you know. Grin him, Davey. are over. There's only one way to get around them. Want to run? No. We got to do a tribal dance with them. I'll talk to them. Yeah, you talk about both of them. Crazy, man. You're the hardly more. I can see more like I can see more. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. George, what did he say? I ain't finished yet. Oh, see my heart, go. Oh, see my heart, go. I go see, ho, 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 me so. Hey, George, what did he wind up saying? He said he'd be very happy to dance with us with one condition. What's that? That we don't step on his blue suede shoes. <laughs>
I tell you, you two kids are something, too. How about doing us another song, would you? We'd sure love to, but we need a little room for this one. Oh, we got lots of room, boy. Go ahead. On the lake of Tini Como in the old night of And I want you and all the opera gang, Larry and Laura and everybody, to be sure and see it because uh, it's great news that we've all been waiting for. Hi, folks. This month, a very special event took place at Checkerboard Square in St. Louis. And here it is on film. The dramatic manufacture of the 50 millionth ton of Purina Chows. And here's how it happened. Gathered together for the occasion were a group of Purina officials, including Mr. Donald Dan. President of the Ralston Purina Company. And next to him is Mr. Matt Seekhouse, Purina's pioneer St. Louis mill manager, now retired, who's on hand to represent the early days. Mr. Harry Caldwell, present mill manager, is signaling Mr. Danforth that the 49,999,999th ton of Purina Chows is almost completed. There's the signal. And there starts Purina's 50 million ton as Mr. Danforth and Mr. Seekhouse take over the sewing of the special band. With Purina's 50 million ton, one era of progress ends and another starts. Speaking of progress, Matt Seekhouse could talk for hours about the changes in the feed manufacturing process since the first ton of Purina child was made more than 60 years ago. When he started making Purina chows, the latest mixing machinery was a scoop shovel and plenty of elbow grease. That's a far cry from today's modern push-button mill, turning out hundreds of thousands of tons of poultry and livestock feed each month. This growth is a tribute to you farm folks who are constantly accepting new and more efficient ways of producing the meat, milk, and eggs needed to feed our growing population. So all the people at Checkerboard Square, as well as that neighbor of yours, your hometown Purian dealer with a checkerboard sign, say thanks a million for the 50 million tons. Well, that was good news, wasn't it, Carl? It sure was, And hey, Carl, did you know that Buddy Epson sings real good, too, or is that news to you? No, it's not news to me. I sings real good. Well, he's over there talking to Chet Atkins. Let's go over there and get him to sing. All right, let's go right on over. Hey, buddy, have you got over your episode with David Crew Cut yet? I, I'll never get over that. <laughs> <laughs> How about singing a song for us, buddy? Well, I'd love to, Benny. Why don't you kids sit here and I'll give you a word of fatherly advice, especially you, young man. 
When you travel down the trail of life, always beware of one thing. A stranger with a deck of cards. I stepped aboard a river boat bound for New Orleans. And there I met a man who seemed to be a man of means. We got into a friendly game. At first I won a lot. But somehow when the stakes got high, he always took the front with a wild card. He had a wild card. The luckiest man I ever saw drew a wild card. We drifted by St. Louis. I was hoping we would land. Before I get through hoping, he had dealt another hand. I had a pair of aces, so of course I bet my stack. But when he called my hand, that man had aces back to back was a wild card. He had a wild card. He was winning every buck. I never saw such a dog on luck. We went ashore at Memphis just to take a little stroll. I didn't feel too bad because I still had half my roll. The boat pulled out for Natchez and my luck was running great. Until I saw him make one draw and fill an inside straight with a wild card. He had a wild card. I just had no luck at all with this Gaylord Rabbit and all. I told him that he cleaned me out all my ready cash. He got up like a gentleman and twirled his mustache. He had me meet a lady friend. And from the way she looked, before that boat passed Baton Rouge, I knew that I'd been hooked by a wild Card. She was a wild card. The way she played her little game made those other cards look tame. She took me to the railing, and the moon was big and high. I we only kissed, and then I missed a stick pin from my tie. I watched what next, and then my ring, and brother, it's the truth. I didn't worry till I lost my golden pivot to that wild card. She was a wild card. This little lady known as Lou took the car fare from my shoe. We got to New Orleans when they put the gangway down. The pair of them walked off that boat just like they owned the town. He wore my ring and stick pin, and as if I needed proof, I dangled from his watch chain with my golden pivot suit. She was his wild card, his wicked wild card. Now the moral of the story is beware. When you're traveling, stick to solid. You know, I'm getting with this operator. Oh, well, so what can we do for you, buddy? Well, you know, I have always known that one of the mainstays of the opera was a sacred or religious song, and I wish you'd sing one for us. Yes. It sure is, and I'd like to do one for you. Before we go on with any more singing, we'd like to thank the editors of TV Star Parade for the fine story about our Grand Ole Opry show. All of us appreciate it very much, and we want all of you folks to be looking for the next issue of TV Star Parade. It'll be out May the 5th. 
and Buddy Epson, the Collins kids, and the Briar Hoppers. Let's everybody get out here and do one more good old song, huh? Yeah. And come back and see us again four weeks from tonight when Purina brings you another big show with lots of your Grand Ole Opry favorites. And Purina's guest stars will be the DeMarco sisters along with the Junior Brahoppers and the visitor all the way from Hawaii. Come be with us next month on Purina's Grand Ole Opry. is produced in Nashville by WSM Television for the Ralston Purina Company, makers of Purina Chows, sanitation products, and Ralston cereals. Stay tuned for the Lawrence Welk Show on the ABC Television Network. <laughs>